it has been surreal devastation on the sister isle. This has been the result of Hurricane Irma's fury, a powerful Atlantic storm, one of the most powerful on record, 185 mile per hour winds crashing into the sister isle. That has been the result. Since the hurricane, ICA has been partnering with, the, with CADI and also the Barbuda Council and the Ministry of Agriculture with respect to procuring a number of materials such as feeds and fencing materials for the farmers. To build capacity for the farmers with respect to implementing paddocks where they can house their animals. So far we would have done approximately four different paddocks. Also we realized that feeding with respect to grasses and legumes in Barbuda were very limited, hence the reason why we also decided to do a demo plot whereby we are going to introduce various types of grasses and legumes such as the Lucina, um, the Serracho, the Chrysopogon. We're going to try and improve, at least bring in some improved grasses so that will help to upgrade the feed situation, improve grasses and legumes that's going to be in the demonstration plot. We're also going to try and introduce some new concepts like poaching energy banks, which can be used in the, as dry season feed as well as in the wet season. Started our program um, based on the assessment and the different activities that we identify was looking at uh, apiculture, that is beekeeping, right, because we saw that a lot of beekeepers lost their, their hives, so we needed to do something in uh, getting the beekeepers uh, in production again. We basically tried to get farmers to now start to work together instead of just working alone and bearing all the strains on itself. We're trying to get each and everyone to kind of come together and start to work in, in a cooperation, a cooperative kind of a mentality so that things can be easier for everybody, right? even down to the organizations in how they gather information. We're building what we call the Climate Smart Farm here. And what it is, is it's resilient to the effects of climate change, whether that be a hurricane, or drought or even saltwater intrusion uh, from the loss of mangroves. And we think it'll have a very positive impact on the future of agricultural production for the country, filling uh, the immediate needs of, of vegetable production here on the island, or even as far as inspiring the students to show them what the uh, next step in technology is in agriculture. It's been a real pleasure and an honor to partner with Cardi and Ica. And what it goes to show you is that, you know, we can't do it all alone. The more we partner, the more we work together, the more we can accomplish for the good of the people. Yeah, one of the critical things that we, we at ICA realize, uh, we realize that when you talk about resilience, if you have the tools, you have the technology, and you have the models, uh, however, you don't have that psychological, social shift in terms of how persons think, uh, then all that eventually becomes to naught. And so what we are trying to do here is to try to teach persons how to, to innovate, when to innovate, and um, to get that culture of, of, of building resilience and also that culture of efficiency. What we recognize is the partnerships and strategic alliances are very important, especially as it relates to rebuilding. What we are hoping that the farmers recognize as well is the aspect of working together, organizing themselves and building the capacity. The formation of groups usually assists in this process and what we're hoping to do at CARDI is basically lend that technical support as well as provide the actual implements required for the farmers to succeed. Moving forward, I believe there is the need for closer collaboration between the Ministry 
between Cardi, between Aika Ephel, and a number of other NGO groups such as Garden Pool, for example, in order to revitalize the sector. In all in all, we're getting there, but I still have to say again, thanks to um, Ika and Cardi for the work that they have done with us and the work that they are doing and continue to do in Barbuda. So I'd like to thank Aika, first of all, for providing the funding in terms of um, our consultant's garden pool in bringing that particular technology in terms of upgrading our agricultural program. I'd also like to thank Cardi for providing technical expertise and, and, and knowledge in terms of bringing to the table, um, adding to value in terms of where we're going. The Ministry of Agriculture, Government of Antigua and Barbuda, and the Barbuda Council and all who have participated in terms of the recovery process and getting us positioned in terms of getting back up to speed and more importantly delivering a program to our young people, our students here in Barbuda which will equip them with the necessary tools for them to be resilient in the face of climate change and the challenges, those serious challenges which we're going to have to cope with in the future. It's not, climate change is not a death sentence. What we have to do is to learn, understand, and eventually adapt with our technology. I really would like to thank the people of Barbuda, first of all, for allowing us to come in and really appreciating and understanding what we, we are doing here. And through the extension, we have other persons that are outside of Barbuda that have lent their support in various planning phases um, other specialists from ECA as well who were involved in developing the project and supporting the project, particularly the office from um, Trinidad and Tobago and also headquarters as well. The resilience team, we want to thank them and definitely we look forward to providing a report and also uh, a strategy as to how we could continue some of the work that we are doing here in a sustainable manner.